Good evening. Welcome to the Sunderland Board of Selectmen meeting. Tonight is Monday, April 23rd, 2018. And we're getting into the home stretch here before our town meeting this Friday at uh, the school. And that will be at 7 p.m. And I'm sure we'll mention that again a little later, but I thought I'd pop that in there now. <clears throat> so tonight, we've got first on our agenda, we've got uh, Mike and the, you guys want to actually slide on down since you're sure. up? Come on down. And then we're going to talk about the uh, 300th anniversary parade committee and all the logistics around that. Gentlemen, good evening. Hi, hey, Michael. Um, in order for us to cross 116, we have to get a access or re request uh, access to the highway. And uh, since our parade commences or starts at the <coughs> elementary school in Old Amish Road and terminates at North Main Street at Silver Lane, um, crossing 116 at the uh, traffic uh, traffic lights is certainly necessary. Um, the parade we anticipate to be 90 minutes to two hours. Um, so in order to cross 116, we end up realistically closing the Sunderland Bridge. And uh, we've been, Vinnie and I and other members of the committee have been working with the police department um, the sheriff's departments from both Hampshire and Franklin County are letting us use variable message boards. But our goal is to bring our permit application to Mass DOT Friday. So um, what we're seeking from uh, the board is a, a letter of endorsement. We've sought one and got one from the police chief th uh, today. I spoke with the fire chief. He's, he, uh, I delivered a package to the fire department on Friday. And uh, he's reviewing that this week, and will and he's already spoken to Eric. He told me, and that it doesn't look like there's any major issues on his part either. Of course, the road will activate and reopen for emergency vehicles. Right. They're they're, they're yeah. exempt from the closure. Um, maybe talk to Zach over at the uh, yes. the EMS and, and just well know. DOT. Um, we're going to notify. Amherst Dispatch, State Police, and the uh, well, Shelter Control. I'm just saying a, a note from Zach also. You know, okay. That, that he, you know, the, that the bridge will open for. I think that may, if you combine with the uh, the fire chief and the police chief, I think he, you know he'd be good also. Okay. It may help. It may help your cause. And I got I got his number if you need it. Very well. Yeah. So that'll cover all. I just, I, I just saw it. He's the, gonna have a rig in, in town on our, you know, yep. for us as well. Yep. Okay. Actually, I saw him on Friday here at the library. He was here. Yeah. So, yes. yeah. any questions or comments from the board? Uh, not with respect to the letter of endorsement, but maybe if, as a follow-up, the opportunity mm -hmm. to give an update as to the 300 people are talking. That's <laughs> uh, true. You get, you you get, get a chance. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, I'm I'm pretty much just parade. Okay. Okay. But uh, I don't know how many units we got so far, Ben. Well. And they're coming in every day. I mean, everybody waits. Probably already uh, 10 or 11 floats, mm -hmm. at least that many bands. Nice. The Shriners themselves are bringing 155 people. So I think we're going to have a nice, nice. well-rounded parade. Nice. That's good. Something for everybody. Our local road closures. Um, Will be Amherst, Old Amherst Road from South Silver Lane to to Old uh, to South Main Street, yep. and South Main Street uh, from Old Amherst Road all the way North Main Street to Claybrook. Sure. We're using probably parts <clears throat> of Russell Street, um, and Old Amherst Road as staging. Yep, that makes sense. Um, and then at the end, we'll be using the up until to Claybrook Road uh, as a uh, way of terminating the parade and and that parking. Uh, is uh, going well. All states are uh, Delta Sand and Gravel, w which has that big field next to All states mm -hmm. corporate office. Mm -hmm. uh, Craig has allowed us to use that. Uh, Dave's Nursery is uh, offered to use the north side of his parking area. Um, of course, we'll have the bank, the post office, still all be closed as of noon on Sunday. Um, Mount Toby Farm will let us park. Well, that's ends of property going up on Silver Lane. Great. I remember from the Conway one, that was kind of an issue with the parking and everything. 
Yeah, yeah, well, I must say stuff. that the, the residents that we've approached have been very cooperative. Okay. That's excellent. Allowing us parking. Can I give, give a plug? See sure. Yeah. Give a plug? <laughs> this is Mike, my husband, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing you, you brought her Mike. Him or? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, you know, beside the parade, obviously, we have Friday night, which is going to be the elementary school. Mm -hmm. is going to be doing a um, presentation um, on a history of the town. Oh, nice. And there's going to be a birthday cake um, baking, decorating contest for the kids. Um, there's going to be hamburgers and french fries for people who come. And then in the morning, Saturday morning before the parade, it's going to be a day long um, festivities. Mm -hmm. um, the morning before 8.30, we're going to start having a farmer's market and there's going to be live bands playing nice. throughout the morning. Um, dance school, martial arts demonstrations, sheep herding, um, kids programs from the rec department. And, um, and then they'll take a break for the parade and then it all goes back to the fields again and there's more bands and there's food trucks and hot air balloons and crafters and uh, right up till 9.30 when the fireworks shoot up. Nice. So, yeah. And then Sunday commences with Fire department. Fire department's festivities, yep. along with um, Polish club from South Deerfield sponsoring a Polish band that's going to be playing in the afternoon. Nice. It's a family event for the and sponsored pretty much by the Sunland Fire Department and, the, and their Firemen's Association. But so you know, hoping for good weather. Mm -hmm. If you know some meteorologists, yep. <laughs> give us a good word, would yeah. you? Um, we're planning for planning for the uh, you know. Hoping for the best and planning for the worst. Oh, great. You know, grasslands in, in the rainy season right. can't be used, so we have to plan on blacktop and hopefully not use it, but use the grass at the sure. grammar school for staging. That makes sense. The so, tent, excuse me, the tent, right, Brenda, seats 300? Yes. So there's, there'll be seats for 300 people okay. That's great. all weekend nice. on all the events. So, so, so Michael, one, one question. Um, but I, I know you're, you're going to have signage on the intersection of 116 and 5 and 10 and different locations mm -hmm. what happens if someone comes down and they're waiting at the bridge there'll be there'll be there'll be an officer uh, chief D. metropolis advised he spoke with chief Petrarch and there'll yep. be a single officer on that side of the bridge diverting them okay okay so okay. they're not it's, it's, not, it's not gonna be a, a red light forever yeah there'll be someone at, at every roadblock at every closure there'll be a, a, a policeman there to to, to reroute. Yeah. You know, and again, what we're hoping for is that Mass DOT as well will activate the 91 uh, variable message boards. Oh, right. So indicating, you see that. Indicating, you know, because <clears throat> it's also the weekend of the taste of Amherst. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, so they could see some traffic with that as well. And so they'll be diverted to Coolidge, Mueller yep. in South Hadley. Right. And, mm -hmm. uh, so, so, so 91 south from south, south of the would be city. there and like then 91 north, north you'd be you'd be you know general pierce and or right. gil montague Got it. Yeah. i wrote on it today it's fine so so 91 though i think it's about the actuating like a week before to give people enough notice mm -hmm. okay that's good so if um you have something down by uh, plum tree to divert them down plum tree yeah. and then back on uh, 47 south if they get in 47 and 63 in montague center okay i'm just thinking of what they may ask you and, and they may be wanting more you know i'm asking for their guidance on what they should say mm -hmm. because i know we have so many just so many characters right yeah good point you know i think sunderland in itself is too many characters sure. how you abbreviate that yeah. i don't know <laughs> Blue Bridge closed. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, to supplement all that, we've got all kinds of signs coming from Historic Deerfield. They've been very wonderful helping us out. Mm -hmm. Kind of there. Okay. From parking to, to uh, food, all kinds of signs, depending on what we want to direct people to, oh, they'll nice. be up. So. A lot of logistics involved in it. Logistics so. makes, it, makes or breaks an event. Yep. Oh. You can do all you want about the weather. You get a 10 mile backup on 91. Everyone will remember. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sunderland, all oh, of that time. Yeah. <laughs> you guys did this. <laughs> yep. Well, something to talk about 50 years from exactly now. Exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> so when, when, you, when you say uh, two hours, so you plan on closing it from one, 
So the parade's gonna kick off at one? Right. So, and the road closure won't kick in until the parade reaches that, that area of the- Okay, okay. good. You know, yeah. So, but yeah, the kickoff is, is for one o'clock, and uh, so probably, what, 10, 15 minutes to get to the center of town, and, and then the, it'll be closed. Uh, okay. PVTA, I looked at their summer schedule on a Saturday, one, maybe two buses, and that involves four stops. So it's not really a, a major sense. Where we're looking yeah, for three buses, summer, right? three buses, three buses to shuttle. Mm -hmm. No, probably not. The best, Deerfield. Okay. Yeah, so as long as they know about it ahead of time, they, they just reroute the buses. It's not a, mm -hmm. for them it's not a, they, they do it all the time at the university. Whenever we have a water main break in the middle of the road, <laughs> I gotta go around it. Yeah, it's, nope. it's not a big deal. Uh, so tonight, a letter of endorsement with some of the details, and you can share that with the office, and we can get those yeah. get those out and through. We got the draft ready to go. Okay. Mo motion uh, to uh, support the uh, three hundredth committee and uh, allow the chair to sign. Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Let me see. We just gave it all to David. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's easier one by than to, to wrangle three. Correct. Yeah. Or, uh, right. We're challenging you with the electricity. That's all right. <laughs> I, got, I, I got it right in the briefcase. That's easy. Okay. I'll see my name up exactly on the board. Right. Blame Dave. <laughs> It'll be the David Pierce Memorial right. closing, right? <laughs> there you go. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks right. so much. Thanks. Thank well, you. Good so luck. Send everybody to the General Pierce Bridge. Oh, yeah. well, there you go. How about yeah. that? Huh? That's, That's funny. Mueller Bridge. They go, where's that? What's yeah. that? It's under investigation. <laughs> we're going yeah. to pierce them and poke them. <laughs> nice. Uh, all right. Mm. And that now. Wonderful, wonderful undertaking. That is. I was like, yeah. Difficult nice. undertaking. So now we have a few items left to go over on our warrant. All right. Unclip this. It was a large wad of paper. Five and for seven that. were. Five and seven were the only ones we had to do? Yes. And, and the five was centered around? Yeah. Yep. And then the values there. Uh, Five Chair, you want to start initially with the capital requests, yes. actual, and then the current, the one that's been recommended by the Capital Planning Committee. Yep. If I could take a couple of minutes. So the Rip. Capital Planning Committee, going through the process of capital submissions, had a total value of requests, and I'm going to exclude the waste treatment plant. I'm not going to talk about the waste treatment plant because the wastewater treatment plant and its uh, subsequent systems have their own funding sources. Yep. But the Capital Planning Committee's original requests from departments submitted was $324,800, just to round up. Yeah. After uh, the reviews of the requests, the sheet you have in front of you marked Article 7, uh, the total offset, the total requests being recommended were uh, are at a value of 235034 and change. And uh, if I could just take a couple of minutes to talk about the original requests versus what uh, was uh, recommended. Primarily, the offset is centered around the definition of what the committee's charge was with capital by definition mm -hmm. uh, dollar values of capital purchase or life cycle of the item being purchased some of the things that were submitted to capital state capital planning committee uh, were just outside of either under the spending or uh, under the life cycle yep. so, so shorter our term. shorter term so our our definition is for, hang on, $10,000 of spending on an asset and 10 years of life. Okay. Let me just get this straight now. Yes. And that said, there were a handful of items that were replacement equipment that were under that value in purchase price, but also under that, under that life cycle. 
a couple of them uh, were in and around uh, equipment for the police department mm -hmm. uh, because again that has a particular life cycle and it has to be replaced within the prior to that 10-year piece if you look at the library the police department town administrators uh, town excuse me recreation fields uh, those were uh, within the individual I'm sorry if you aggregate them they work toward a building asset and I'll use the library for an example if you had uh, roof cleaning masonry repairs and HVAC repairs individually those wouldn't necessarily meet the criteria by definition but if you roll them all together they all meet the criteria because they're associated with a building asset mm -hmm. so if we were to take the and ask for a building plan this would effectively be an itemized quote on the building plan right and so that perspective was really important whereas uh, a piece of a piece of rolling equipment uh, may not be so that was important for us to bear in mind so what you have in front of you is highway department lease for truck for two years, which we already have the debt on, a fuel dispensing replacement. And I think that's important to bear in mind, although that's less than the definition, it's the third piece of a three piece system. This is the last one it's of the those. Diesel one, right? This is the diesel pump, exactly. So last year it was a combination of the gasoline side, the electronics. This is the last piece of that. If that came forward last year, we actually asked the highway superintendent to split that apart last year because we didn't have the money to pay for the whole program right this is the last piece a truck again the building that is the library there's nothing inside the library request that uh is outside of the definition again i look at these as kind of an itemized quote you look at the two pieces the same logic down at the police department there's building assets security system and uh, entry into the building addressable entry using key fob as opposed to a keypad. And uh, that clearly goes beyond the, the definition. Then we have engineering. Uh, there's a lot of consternation about this engineering piece. Although the Capital Planning Committee was not uh, opposed to the engineering because of needing to get to the 25% for the North Main Street project, there is a lot of consternation about do we continue with this engineer? Yep. Now we have this engineering documents. There are the town's documents. We may not, we're going to draft something to send to the board about concerns about the engineer. Yeah. Uh, IT and upgrade f of the public safety complex and library telephone systems clearly, again, are parts of infrastructure and meet the life cycle requirements. We have a new recreation fields request. This was sent in originally at uh, over $18,000. We parceled this down because some of the elements were maintenance, not capital. Yeah. You know, a seasonal, multi, a triennial program for the fields he, at the town office building, as well as, <clears throat> excuse me, at the elementary school, the merit field. Uh, we pulled the, the capital planning committee's recommendation is to take that request, pull the annual maintenance costs out that are projected multi years forward, and simply pay for the capital part. And then clearly at the end, you've got the two pieces at the elementary school that have come forward. Uh, originally, the Capital Planning Committee was tasked with the Town of Sunderland's percentage of the rolling equipment at Frontier, and really the, the mechanism there is a warrant article. We really feel that that's one that if there's free cash available, uh, that should be submitted in that fashion. So as you look at what we started with, with over $324,000, Capital Planning Committee is bringing a request, uh, bringing a recommendation of spending $235,000 on capital for the town piece. The waste treatment part has its own revenue stream. So we're going to recommending as well these three items. One is the uh, influence in uh, I and I, Tom. Infiltration and inclusion. Thank you. Okay. The second Thanks. word got me. <laughs> infiltration. Uh, study. This is a state requirement, and we have to have this as a decade-long plan. So this is the first phase. You'll see another phase coming uh, next year. Uh, analyzer, and again, uh, this happens to be the last one. is isn't per. It's actually a series of pumps. But those uh, are, are uh, funded through the Waste Treatment uh, Reserve Fund paid for by users. 
and the treatment, the excuse me, the uh, treatment plant and the underground facilities that they support have been really the model for what some of this capital planning has been based on. Uh, and then lastly, of course, the recommendation for fire truck. We have to still work out with the finance committee about the method for purchase, yeah. not the need, but the method. The method, whether it's debt exclusion, USDA, partial stabilization, how do we go about that? That's, a, that's an ongoing discussion. But the difference, and this leads to this discussion about Article 5, has to do with the total value you actually move to capital stabilization in a reduction of basically um, $90,000 of requests. So that's where I'll leave it right now. Thanks. That's pretty self-explanatory in yeah. terms of the numbers. So you're saying instead of 160, it would be uh, $90,000 less than 160? Uh, that's, 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 that's the discussion for these two bodies, yeah. With respect to the capital planning, this is what the capital planning committee is pushing for, or is recommending for uh, the actual expenditures this year. To come out of all, come out of stabilization or capital stabilization? Uh, capital stabilization would be the goal because it fits inside the definition and we leave stabilization just where it is. And one of the reasons, and Tom expressed this last, last week, Bruce, at the meeting, um, you guys were downstairs, but moving money into capital stabilization refines, um, it narrows the yeah, definition yeah, of what you can use it yeah. for. And so we may not want to move, that's why we're talking, we left this motion open. It's like, well, maybe we don't want to move all that money into capital and we, we want to we leave it. went round and round with that discussion yeah. just now. Yeah. We weren't sure yeah. what the position was. Right, and that's, that's, that's really for tonight. And that dialogue began last week and I began a couple of weeks ago, actually, the financial team meeting, if I could, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is kind of linear, Bruce. We were downstairs two weeks ago, Tuesday, two weeks past Tuesday, and it was the accountant, Brian, who came in and he was saying, you know, we understand where um, free cash is generated from. We know we push 150 to 180 forward. We know we're good to create a, a base model of about $250,000 that is usually driven from two parts. The first is the money you leave on the table moving forward. The second is unexpended uh, expense requests. So you're good for about two, 225 to 260, he said, and you got four years of that trend. And then there's the anomalies, the how, did, how did you account for something, what accounts did you close, that's how you, you feed forward. Having asked about that history, he said, you guys are lazy, pointing at us because he works for the COG, pointing at us saying, you guys are leaving a whole lot less money in moving forward this year than you did in the last decade. So are you sure that's the right move? As the accountant, from the accountant's perspective, I think 75,000 is a lot lower than you need to move forward based on a nearly $8 million budget. Okay, what's yep. free cash right now? Uh, it's at the top of the sheet, 534,288. It's right at the top of the free cash sheet. You should have that. Hey, we don't have that. What? You can, huh? Now you can have that. Oh, yeah, we start, we started with 534. Okay. okay. And a year ago, Bruce, when we came in uh, and, and members of the board, we came in to this part of the budget discussion. We had only 700,000, but we could accommodate 230 of that based on a one-time lease. And the bottom line here, the closing balance is after everything's spent. Based on yeah. this, based on this table, but Bruce, we're currently talking about the red number one sixty two eight four. That is under the two capital stabilization line. Right. Number right. five. Right. 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 I realize right. that. Okay. Right. A consideration I would put for the board is in the motion here. These values. There was discussion last week about moving any cap, any money to stabilization. Our formula shows 53,428 going to stabilization. You'll see in our draft recommendations that we do not do that, that we leave that in free cash. Stabilization is, has a starting balance of $562,347. We're not asking in this particular budget cycle or warrant to withdraw anything from that. So we would deviate from the free cash guideline and not put that value 
into stabilization. This week's discussion is what's the value we would put into capital stabilization to fund the capital budget. We raise 110,381 this year on the rate. That's what we do. We have that as part of the override. And I want to thank the town for doing that. If we were to take that 165,289 uh, and reduce it, the difference between the two, and the numbers will come up here soon, reduce it from reduce it essentially by $90,000 to be able to fund the capital budget, leaving twenty nine nineteen in there. That would leave, again, I don't have a calculator in front of me, whatever 160 minus 90 is in free cash. So that's the wide ranging way of getting to Article 5. So you'd only transfer Seventy thousand dollars to capital stabilization. Yeah, we get those numbers right now. In a ballpark of seventy thousand, yeah. and, and then the rest would remain in, in free, free cash. cash. Correct. So your total free cash at the bottom would be seventy-five thousand dollars plus the fifty-three plus yeah. the uh, ninety. Ninety. The ninety. Right. Yeah. Right from not. Yeah. So it'd be $140,000 plus the 75 in round figures. Round figures. Would be the ending free cash balance. Right. At the end of the whole budget cycle this time around. Correct. At, if everything passes at town meeting, yes. Okay. That puts us up approximately with, because we usually try to look for about 150,000 carryover, right? Well, 150,000 is a historical average, and it's important to bear in mind we've had budget incremental budget increases in the Department of Revenue guidelines are by percentage. That's true. And you yeah. know that percentage is important to bear in mind. We start talking about having $560,000 and uh, 92,000, which will end up being about 2,000. You know, the entire town at that point would have in reserves, for example, uh, less than oh, $300,000 less than the water district has in its reserves. And that's not the town. Yeah, and and uh, we, we and I did we did correct you know I did um, check into I asked Chair to check in the math. water district has what eight hundred and sixty six thousand dollars in their their reserves. Reserve. So we got one point five. So I misspoke. Yeah. So go ahead. Hmm. I hate to be redundant on this if I'm asking something, but I am coming up with numbers that don't add up when I'm confused because we're starting a capital stay. Stabilization at sixty-five five seventy-six. Okay. And then if we have, I think what I'm confused is that there's some items that are not being moved on this two thirty-five, or this is the full amount that it's that's being approved for for capital stabilization. Uh, this is the recommendation for yeah. the capital budget. Right. From this. Capital Planning Committee to the Board of Selectmen. Right. And so if we approve that and we make a transfer of 160 284, that still comes up short of paying for all of the 235 if we have the 65 plus the 160 284. Uh, we actually have an override Im impact of, we actually have a, a cash infusion of 110 as well. From, just from the straight on the tax rate. Yep. Okay. Great so point. That, yep. And that's so what probably two seventy or so. Okay. And that's what that. Yeah. yeah that's I mean, on the some list. Of those yep. Plus. yep. So we're getting kind of this, yeah. That's light the on one ten three one. Right. Ten three eighty one. Yeah. Yeah. Ten three eighty one. Thank you. So I'd appreciate conversation around moving away from our free cash guidelines, which has been good for us from 2009. This would be the first year from de away from a deviating from those percentages. Yeah, but we didn't have the capital stabilization I agree with going that. in. So yep. That, yep. that formula is kind of outdated. A little skewed. Yep, I agree with that. And we had Bruce last week, again, when you guys were downstairs, uh, the discussion was about revisiting that. We get through town meeting and revisit that with a financial team. You know, does it make sense because of the size of the total operating budget 
to allocate the OPEB less than the, less yeah, to yeah, capital yeah, yeah, yeah. percentage yeah. to stabilization. The formula, and then, you mean. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Just the formula. Yep. And then moving forward in budget years, again, we have, as you pointed out, we have capital stabilization, which we did not have at that point. I was doing something, and now it's gone. Yeah, you were <laughs> uh, it was okay. somewhere around the 70. Well, it makes sense to go back and periodically review things, too. Exactly. So we have two, three, five. Where are you? Zero, three, four. So if that's the case, we would need instead of one hundred and sixty thousand two eighty four, we would need about that seventy and leaving a little bit in capital stabilization. That would leave the ninety thousand two eighty four in free cash. And again, those numbers we can we can move inside of the motion. Okay, so Article Five would read you, you transfer in the sum of seventy thousand and change. Yeah, we we have a number in there that's that reflects the difference again about a hundred. It would be about ninety thousand dollars less than currently right now. Okay. And again, the math the math is. I want to make sure to take the time to do it correctly, but it would certainly be less than the one sixty two eighty four. Was that what you guys were thinking, Bruce? Is it? We, we had the discussion there because I, I heard you last week talking about it. I wasn't quite sure. Right. And we, we went back and forth two or three times on that. And for us, the Capital Planning Committee met. There are a couple of pieces inside of this capital original capital request that the Planning Committee is, 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 is going to send a note to the select board because some of them seemed that they were um, – that they should be more policy driven and then the capital piece comes versus a capital piece and then you're reacting to it. Yep, that makes and sense. that's that was really I, I applaud the members of the capital planning committee for that discussion. It's like so well wait a minute, do we wanna whatever pick pick a particular thing, but we didn't recommend a handful that we felt could be that way. I use a you know a thirteen thousand uh, dollar mowing section. Okay, well what's changed? What does that mean? We're not mowing now. We contract most of it out. What does that right, mean? We had this discussion right. a couple what, weeks what ago. What does it yeah. mean? So why are we doing this? Yeah. So come to the board and say, well, okay, we're going to expand those efforts. We're going to do whatever it is. But through the capital planning piece, it's like, eh, I don't know if it works. And there was a consensus with yeah. the group. Uh, that makes sense because ideally our spending should be driven by our policy. Correct. Not the other way around. Correct. So, yeah. Have uh, ten nine, ten thousand nine twenty two left in uh, capital stabilization if we move seventy. Okay, so, I mean, I mean, going forward with a little bit of capital stabilization is important. Something, something, right. something pukes on you mid year. You yeah. got to figure it out, right? Where are we going to get that money from? And Wait. the narrow view of capital keeps us out of the stabilization part. Would is ten cutting it too close? Would no, it, that's would what it, I was. That's what I was wondering. Like, yeah, do we yeah. want to? Come up with some kind of you know, policy or guidelines for what we want. You to always keep have that money sitting in there. Stabilization. You're not going to get that policy tonight. Yeah. No. You know, right. Right. <coughs> Just still have the left in stabilization fund. Yeah. Exactly. You still got money. There's more flexibility there. There is. Than there is <coughs> capital stabilization. Absolutely right. right. Yep. As long as we have something somewhere where if something you, you never in know when something's yeah. going to happen. So your, your total cash reserves will be. Around six hundred thousand something. Yeah, in that range, you would have the five sixty two and then the ten thousand left over. And yeah, it'd, it'd be it'd be yeah okay. So we we would drop we would actually drop some reserve values. You know, we'd be down there. We're starting the year at eight point six percent right now, with the current plan. Excuse me, current plan. But I, I personally feel. And with the input from the financial team members, the treasurer collector, the town administrator, the accountant, looking at our history, moving seventy-five thousand dollars forward sets us up for a, a, a really interesting, op, really interesting free cash number for next year. That would not be a lot of fun. Right. That's making the cushion a lot thinner. Right. Go 
don't think you want to toss in on that, Tom. Or you, okay. <coughs> yeah, because that, that's leaving us at like, even just going by past numbers, like half of what we usually run forward. That's correct. And then if you start applying percentages where you ought to be looking, that's probably a lot less. I could see in the not too near future where you want to be leaving $200,000 moving forward. Right. But not this year. You could see based on a formula wanting to do that. Right. Kind of ease, ease, the, ease the burden. So yeah. Bruce, has, Bruce has asked in the past about uh, wondering where free cash comes. Can we speak to that? Uh, we can speak to the last four years where we've got a quarter of a million dollars of free cash. It's a combination of the free cash moved forward from the Past current year. budget year and then unexpended uh, unexpended expenses. And that's been the base between two hundred and forty and two hundred and sixty thousand dollars. The last year we had a series of two accounts that were closed out and I don't have my note from me, but Again, we can get that information. Also, through. grant reimbursements that come in too. That's true. Some because of our of grants are reimbursable grants, so when they come um, in, that yeah, becomes the grants are a couple of years behind or something. Yeah, and then yeah. that becomes free cash. We just closed out a green communities um, grant. All right, because we'll expend the money and then get reimbursed typically. So, so that explains why last year we were able to have the miraculous. Kind of. Well, that was that was one piece. Last year was an accounting piece about the way that the capital stabilization fund was being accounted for. Still that was a hundred and hundred plus thousand yeah, dollars specifically. that was mm. accounted incorrectly, yep. and that has been resolved. Yep. So that's that's why you that's dro immediately correct. dropped off. Almost yeah. one hundred ninety thousand dollars went away. Yeah. Was two years of the way it was calculated on the uh, submission to the Schedule A. And that's why it showed up that way. So we appropriated for it. This is one of the reasons we're appropriating differently this year. The accountant kind of caught it, and the accountant caught it. So it was a good thing. Yeah, that gets us in a better position going forward. We have the mechanism. Yep. There's a linearity. So last year we we appropriated in the in the regular budget and didn't catch it in the appropriation side, and that's that's being completely done with funding sources in the motion this year. I'm just still doing math. Oh, sorry. Five. Well, I mean, I guess I just wanted to. Yep. Uh, you know, follow up with that is that it's not like we're um, we we are we try to conservatively uh, budget from our revenue from our from our local receipts, um, but it's not like we're we're missing it by forty percent or fifty no, percent. No. That's, no. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand that. Yeah, and, and but I but I think it's it's important because that that's one way that's one way you could you know you got to look back at your history to see where you. Well, I, I remember one time twenty something years ago where where they didn't they didn't figure in local receipts at all that you know and all of a sudden you end up with three hundred three hundred back then it was like three or four hundred thousand dollars all of a sudden just push just where to come from it's right. like. Well, the year before, but no one took into took it into consideration. Sure. So, every years, Tom, along along the same historical line, you'll remember this: asking for assessors overlay. Yeah, but we don't have to do that anymore. That that's baked into the formula. At the end of the third year of abatement, the state makes the assessors push those overlays forward. So they're they're part of our free cash formula. When's the last time the fees were were reevaluated? For which fees? The uh, you know the. The fees the town charges for whatever. Uh, actually, just was it last year, the year before? It was actually fairly recent. Uh, this year, the building inspector and the electrical inspector came forward with a fee schedule increase. Yeah. And what, what about the other fees? You know, like the particulars license, the liquor licenses, that kind of stuff. We could certainly do that. It's not not been in this budget cycle. But, but I don't know. Do the you know? Exact do you remember when they were set, Tom? Um, I I I don't know specifically. I know we've done it. it do you remember, Bob? We did it at one of our town meetings. We we went through we went through all our, and in the selectmen, um, I think it was with Margaret. She 
surveyed all the, the, the surrounding towns. I remember the discussion in particular about the liquor license, because a liquor license is a pretty hefty is a pretty hefty fee, and our right. our fee was kind of like in in the middle of the road. What is it like a it? Oh, is it Sherry? Is a thousand dollars or twelve hundred dollars? It's it's a the liquor license is a. No, it's fourteen. I think it's fourteen hundred dollars. It's a pretty, it's a pretty hefty license. Most of the other ones, like the game, gaming and live entertainment. I, I don't. We just it was Maybe a few that's years ago. We should look at. Sure. You know, yeah, we can. Yeah. yeah, we can. Uh, I mean, usually we we haven't, unless un, unlike the state, we haven't we haven't tried to. Uh, make or turn the fees into a revenue generation you know they, we want to cover they expenses do, they do oh they we want to cover we wanted to cover expenses with them you know well, and i know i know well, the trap with the trap with associating fees is they're not predictable the what they're not predictable yes. you may have a certain amount of application oh yeah oh yeah i realize that but i mean we should be getting what the market prevails well, I, mean, I think yeah. it makes sense to maybe come up with a, a set idea a, a set time so like every x number of years every five years review, you reevaluate right, them you and stuff could just from inflation and stuff yep right. that makes that makes sense i mean uh, and, and i get what tom's saying about like covering the costs and honestly we're not going to be able to turn it into a, a giant revenue oh, source maybe, anyway. you know a few bucks here a few bucks there yeah but i mean it makes sense to check it periodically interestingly enough that would show up in free cash yeah yeah, I think the only place it would show up. The, the biggest driver for <coughs> local receipts is if Bob Doobie keeps going out and buying new vehicles. That's big right. trucks, Excited get those big trucks. <coughs> you know, as long as Bob Doobie is buying trucks, we're we're doing really well. And with the trucks. with <laughs> new trucks, trucks. No, new. <laughs> no 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 no. And with the, with the insane amount of money I'd be getting from his retirement as moderator, yeah, I can I can see a new truck rolling right in yeah. next. June immediately, right? <laughs> Register in New Hampshire, Bob. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Smoking like a good finance committee guy and property owner in town. So, if I could circle back to the Article Five discussion. Yes. Uh, if you, if we roll, this would be uh, for discussion. If you roll the capital improve capital planning committee's recommendation, you use the starting balance of sixty-five five seventy-six. You recognize that we have 110, 381. I had to make sure my math is right. Uh, and then we add uh, $70,000 from free cash. We would have an, an exiting balance of basically 10,923. That's less than we're starting with this year, but that would leave that would leave 123,000. So you're talking about leaving 75, 123. 200 and change in free cash, That'd which is which is this, which 75. is which is actually the starting point that the that the accountant said we should be at. Right, and that makes me feel much more comfortable than 75,000. And that's where we, with respect to uh, uh, the the motion, and that is again if we have a zero three for the article four. And if we have this modification, change the language to seventy thousand on Article Five to capital stabilization, that effectively leaves that effectively moves a hundred thousand dollars back, nearly a hundred thousand, a little over one hundred ten into stabilization. So that it would be an even seventy thousand. Is that? I just put that number out there for discussion. An even seventy thousand would leave us exiting value of. Ten nine two three in capital stabilization. Now, part of the capital planning committee's discussion was what's on the horizon, and it's important to bear in mind we have right now a buildings assessment going with an architect and an MEP team for all the town buildings. They're developing a five, ten, and twenty-year plan. Our current recommendation for uh, capital planning committee defers a cruiser for the police department for a year. So uh, what's in the pipeline is an interesting discussion to be having in the capital yeah. planning committee is starting right after town meeting about meeting with the architect and the MEPs about the buildings. What does that plan look like? Yep. And we know we're talking about nearly, we know we have about 
uh, between forty and sixty thousand dollars of baked in deferred capital from this year. That said, it's a nice to have for the second year in a row a funding source for our capital requests that are just not free cash. Right. So I want to thank again the people who voted for that and who supported that and participate on the capital planning committee department heads who are taking these longer views. Hopefully we'll never see another telephone upgrade at the library, public safety complex, right. this building. Those those monies are spent and they're done. When, when's that study going to be completed? We have, uh, June July first of this year. Yeah. But I, I, I like the idea of the longer term up to a twenty year. Yeah. Well I was actually it was, I think it was one, one of those one of those, you know, sage members of the Capital Planning Committee said, Well, what about this report that comes out? What do we do if you have a you know nine million dollar horizon and I'm making numbers up because I haven't seen the report? Maybe you get nine million dollars over a twenty year period. What do you do with that? You know, how do we make sure a binder doesn't land on a Bob's new truck's hood and drives away. <laughs> uh, it's important to be able to forecast that out and, right. have, a, and have a good idea. Have a real plan for it. Go. And it happens to tie in, and Lauren's made this comment in the past, it ties in with the retiring of some debt. Mm -hmm. you know, we know we're retiring debt in 2020. If we have to incur debt in to deal with some of these things, well, that's perfect timing because it stabilizes the tax rate. Right. Then we don't have these gyrations right. of it up and down because it's, sometimes that's even worse than you know a slow movement one way or the other. Right. And I think that yellow line over there shows that our tax rate's the fourth lowest in the whole county. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah, I actually was over there counting because we don't have line numbers. But right now, out of 31 in the county, we're number 27. If the override passes, and this is excluding the debt dropping off. Right. Forget just to kind of forget that. That would only push us up to number 24 yeah. out of 31. Yeah, it's, it's so we're still way down at the, the, the very bottom of the list. And then with the debt coming off, that'll drop us back down again. Right down. And I think if, if, I could, if I could hop up for one second, uh, if we go back on this side, it gives us the rates going back to 1998. Yeah. And the rate that year was 1708. Yeah, and that's and an idea. Think about how much money your dollar bought back then and having that out of there versus sure. now. So I think that's Does a, that give the total assessments? But it's, it's good to be no. a property owner in town, isn't it, Bruce? Well, it depends. I mean, your assessments, it depends the tax rate can go down, but if your assessment goes up, sure. your taxes are the same, but they go up. Sure. Your total taxes. So, you know, you can play a number game there all you want. Absolutely you can. In particular, as a developer, Maybe you should assess know every three years. Yeah. So. You can only play so much, though. Yeah. Sooner or later, kit. You know, you can't you can't sweep a lot under the rug really in the end. But you got to give us something to brag about. It's not like no. I'm, I think it's very good. I mean, some things it's good to be lasting. You know. That's exactly right. Although on the flip side, we remember that the less you pay, the less you get. Right. Oh, I realize that. So yeah, it's just uh, circling back to the yeah. to the to the motion. Uh, Seventy thousand leaves ten. Well, basically eleven thousand dollars in capital stabilization if we vote this budget. I'm more comfortable with that number compared to 160 Ooh. using the formula. And again, after town meeting, we'll look at these formulas. Yep. Uh, yeah, that can be our our charge going. Look at those into percentages. The so financial team can bring a recommendation to the to excuse me. finance committee and the board at a joint meeting and say, here's what here's what our history has been. Here's what we're thinking the pie should look like moving forward. And especially like after we get that report from the capital side too, we'll have a better idea. Of well, that might be jaw dropping. <laughs> I, 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 Hopefully, it won't be. Well, you know, it might be. But yeah, I, w I would hope, Scott. I, I part of the conversation, in, instead of instead of just uh, just by formula, um, remember how we did the uh, the school choice. The, the town always, the schools always yeah. held school Birds choice and reserve. in reserve. Hmm. <clears throat> so you're kind of like the a year later yep. then I, 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 I would I, maybe we should discuss about um, putting putting the money into stabilization mm -hmm. and then the next year appropriating it out of stabilization into capital stabilization it's, it's you know maybe mechanism, sure may, maybe just do so so allow allow things to settle for one year instead mm -hmm. of and, and I think that's that's what happened this year when I saw all the all the money going to capital stabilization. I, well, wait a second. Sure. How, how how do we 
and 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 again, maybe that maybe that's all we need to sure. do. Maybe we just need to, to wait a year. Well, the other the other piece, Tom, and to Bruce's point, when you didn't have capital stabilization override before we first started with the formula, yeah, we also weren't funding OPEP. Correct. That's true. So there's another there's <coughs> a percentage in there that kind of get we get lost in the weeds a little bit about. But this year we're talking about thirty something thousand dollars to OPEP, thirty two thousand five hundred fourteen dollars. We weren't doing that four years ago. No, and but I mean maybe. Yeah. And, and David's right. You know, every policies are great, but you know, or formula. Yeah. But again, maybe we yeah. just need to hold off before you, it's you know, and then keep have it. You put in stabilization; it's not going anywhere. Yeah. Right. But then you can re. Then you can have the opportunity sure. to re reallocate over time. I think versus, I, I would. I'd suggest that we get through the annual town meeting, get into the into the budget year, look at the DOR guidance. Because that's what Brian, our accountant, is referring to. Yeah. Look at what those DOR guidances are for the reserve totals, yeah, the and, that, and then the mechanisms for getting there. Yeah. You know, I agree. Our, our our free cash formula, the town of the little town of Sunderland, the free cash formula is now being used across multiple municipalities in the Commonwealth. Because we actually stuck to it. This is the first year we're deviating from it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be an ardent supporter of recognizing the formula needs to be dynamic. But also that you have to stick to it. Well, that, that's it. Yep. Whatever that whatever that percentages finally end up being, abandoning the formula, I think, is a bad idea. Again. And again, I'm not suggesting you're saying no, no. that. But 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 not but not but not reviewing the formula. Agreed. Because because things because things change over yep. time. And as yep. you said, you know the capital stabilization, the uh, the OPED, yep. th those things those things change, and 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 you need and you need to. I guess you have to have a financial strategy. Correct. And 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 the, the strategy needs to be applied to the formula. Yep. Agreed. Yeah, this is one year we feel pressure in two different ways. Yeah. Yeah. If only that would happen with chapter seventy. Yeah. yeah. If only it would happen with Thailand or chapter <laughs> yeah, seventy know, right? or any of those. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um your uh, building survey. Mm. Uh, you can develop a twenty year plan, but right. you're gonna have to redo that that report that look at those buildings because every it, right. whatever every five years too. or something yep. to otherwise that 20-year plan is not going to be valid no you're absolutely right the, the 20 you're absolutely right lauren the 20-year plan is is just that that's the end of the current life right. of the next set of tasks that have to happen you know it's a series of 20-year plans and the incremental pieces you're absolutely right it's not it's not a, a zero-sum game on the contrary they're they're very dynamic both in their use and their style their life cycles some, at some point, a 20-year plan doesn't help a building anymore. You go, what do we do with it now? Either use change or construction methods, or you're absolutely right. It's a great point. You know, it's not like borrowing. It's not like buying a, t a replacement truck for a 13-year-old pickup truck. It doesn't work that way. That's a great point. Thank you. Question could turn mm. the difference between what the department has requested mm. and what's actually funded. Does that roughly ninety thousand show up elsewhere in the warrant or in the nope. budget? Now the warrant's developed. It's gone. Yeah. So those requests are are not being recommended to the board of selectmen. We have to we have to sit down with the police chief in particular uh, and talk about uh, the request that he put forward under the capital plan that could be and maybe should be in a warrant article triennial quadrennial because they don't fit capital but they also don't quite fit a budget cycle so yeah, so some enough. of those some of those purchases and it's not exclusive to the police chief on the contrary the highway department is another one um anyway but there is there's a, a budgeting step that i think we have to really f fill the last kind of gap in and that's not necessarily driven on revenues. I would want to have departments come forward with their needs assessment, but if it doesn't fit in the operating budget, and it doesn't fit in the capital request. It's a gray area. And it's somewhere you got to fill it. You know, how do we go about that? We yeah. counseled uh, Frontier Regional about that with, and the other capital team I'm participating in at them, at Frontier Regional that some of this stuff isn't borrowing authorization. Some of this stuff, some of this stuff is borrowing authorization. Some of this stuff is operating budget. Some of this stuff really should just be one time warrant articles and you come back. It gives a real transparency to the whole plan. So that's that's the last piece, I think, between our budget here and this binder here. So 
sort of like those longer term operating expenses. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like it really, it, my yeah. ankle really, really hurts, but it's not broken anymore. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so what do I do to fix it? Yep. <clears throat> Very quick question I asked Bruce. Um, how does that affect our recommendation if we've approved the 160? If it drops to 70, I'm assuming that you guys look like saints. More, yeah. <laughs> Bruce <laughs> gets a win. <laughs> no. to, to your to your point, Elliot, uh, these uh, recommendations here, um, I, we I believe the certainly the board uh, and the finance committee have the same goals and that's the long-term financial health of the town what we can pay for what we can afford um and your 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 vote tonight there's a vote tonight on article four and article five can easily be a point of discussion at town meeting floor it's really simple yeah really really simple thank you tom what do you think um it, it's in, I, I believe it's interesting because we're in how we're, we're defining capital. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes people in the past may have questioned why certain things were capital and why weren't yep. things capital. Right. Department heads even, you know. I agree. And, and, and I think there's cer certain things like we're looking at the budget now that, that are reoccurring that, that it really said, well, why are these not part of the, the budget mm -hmm. per se or... or so I, I think that's a good dis good discussion, but I but I believe what's happened over the last few years, I'll say a few years, is that um, the budgets become much more defined, and, and I think it's easier it's easier to understand where things yeah, are coming from. Good point. You know, on that same point, you know, when you first started lumping the capital stuff together. Yes. It was kind of difficult to understand because the, there might be some things in that that you particularly don't support, but where it's all in a capital as you're doing this year, it's easier to support all of these yeah. without, you know, this put in and that put in and that put in. It doesn't muddy the overall budget. Yeah, and it, and, right. and it gives you a chance to vote on individual mm -hmm. things that, are, like you say, might come up every three years, every five years. Do we really need it? Don't we need it? Right. You know, what's, what's changed? Right. And it gives the people a chance to discuss it more. Yeah, I think Bruce, I, I think that's a good idea. Your 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 point about having it be transparent between the capital budget for the versus the operating budget, uh, I think collectively our, our groups have been working on um, conditioning town meeting, conditioning the uh, the electorate to understand that there is kind of like the keeping the lights on yep. piece and keeping people paid, and then there's kind of the the medium view, which is the capital part that started. Christ, Tom, over a decade ago with respect to the capital stabilization discussion, that took a lot of... Um, capital stabilization was a long time. A, a lot of lift for the town. Yeah, and again... The elections before yeah. passed. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it's been a long... Yeah. I mean, we were talking... I mean, I was... I, I think we were talking about it 15 years ago, yeah. about the need to somehow build it into the budget. Yeah. J just just for the recognition that we do have... We do have capital expenses that occur every year, and you, and you do need to fund them. Well, and it gets back to the point you were making too, Tom, earlier. It makes everything easier to understand in the long run. And also, it's, it's boosted our, our Wall Street rating too, <laughs> well, which in turn yeah. helps our operating costs because our borrowing costs are lower. And those are starting to creep up if anyone's been paying attention to, uh, and we're looking at at least one more, if not two or three more, uh, quarter point bumps by the Fed before the year is out. And that's excluding anything with inflation, and that's starting to creep up too. So. <clears throat> that could all affect every, the budget going in. So if, if I'm if I'm looking at this correctly, and my math and chicken scratchings are, are correct, if we if because we voted zero three on Article four, and if we change Article five's motion from one hundred sixty down to seventy thousand, we would leave the town meeting with 10,932 in capital stabilization based on the request. We would leave free cat, we leave stabilization untouched. We'd go into town meeting with 562347. Yep. We would leave free cash starting at 
excuse me, we'd start with free cash at 534284. If we negated the move <coughs> to stabilization and we negated, uh, so we modified the capital stabilization to 70, that would leave town meeting with 218876, which is like right in the wheelhouse the accountant said. I'll have to double check this. Yeah, yeah. 218,876. If my math is right. Okay. And that's taking, again, we voted 03 for discussion's sake, the 53,000 to stabilization. That's, that's still, we, you know. And then if tonight's discussion around 70,000 leaves the 218 in there, again, the, the accountant was really, really clear. 75,000 is way too little. 150,000 is starting to get lean based on your total budget. This only leaves 218,876 moving forward for free cash. Yeah, because we have to look at it in terms of the actual budget costs, not just a number so of cut it, loose in space. It would, it, as, as shocking as $700,000 two years ago was in having free cash, it would be equally shocking to have $150,000 in free cash certified. Right. It's been widely the other way. out. Yep. Right. And that's one of the things we're trying to avoid is wild gyrations Correct. in the budget, wherever we can. <clears throat> I'm fine with that, Scott. Oh. So with that said, um, sir, if it's a prerogative of the, of the chair, I'd like to make a motion to move Article 5 so that it would change Article 5 so that it reads, vote to transfer from free cash to sum of $70,000 to capital stabilization fund. We have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And again, Elliot and Bruce, I appreciate the, the time and the consideration because this is not quite nest eggs, but not quite checkbook. Yeah. Like, um, how, how, how do we go about it to make sure that we're ready moving forward next year? Yeah. So do you want to make a motion on the recommendation now? Article four? Correct. Yeah. Uh, move to recommend article five as amended at $70,000. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Aye. Excuse me. Excuse me. That's my, my main question is, well, we need to take a separate vote to recommend the amended version yep you can okay. do that you can do that as you're, you're called to a meeting a town meeting so we can do it right there and right there the day of the show and that really you know solidifies our, our cooperation on these steps fortunately it's not reflected as strongly in uh, article eight but uh, yeah. All right, we can get there. Article 7 here, we don't actually have a source in Article 7. I'm sorry, we don't actually have the budget itself. And that's why this was left open, uh, Elliot, because the Capital Planning Committee hadn't brought it forward yet to the to the um, select board. This is one. We had this one tonight. So we both yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, this is the one we're talking about tonight. The board seeing it at the same time. Yeah. So with respect, with respect to... Um, the motion itself, right? As we look at these things, the, the truck and debt exclusion, we're not, again, we have to figure out the financing of that. We know we can finance the 235, and we know that the waste treatment plant is funded. So, Sherry, is this capital budget, does it include the borrowing authorization? No, nope. eight, separate. eight is all. Okay, so as you look at as you look at the orange uh, yellow sheet in front of us, Article Seven really is only the two thirty five zero three four plus the treatment plan. Yep. Correct. I've made the notes on the handout yep. that we use for the open house. That oh good. So it's oh, these well, guys and, and this yeah. one. Yep. How do we get 48 cents in the budget? <laughs> Always 48 cents. Where does that come from? That's like dealing with pennies. Oh, the truck, oh, the truck lease. lease. <laughs> it's the truck lease. Yeah. Nice round numbers. Shoot. If you didn't appropriate the 48 cents, be like, ugh. Yeah. You go you go to Dunkin' Donuts order a medium coffee. There you go. Yeah. Like dollars and two, two cents. cents. Yeah. So two, three, five. We go to zero, Cumberland three, Farms four, get for 99 cents. Plus. And it's like you keep waiting for the day they'll stop making pennies because they cost more than a penny to make, but it'll never happen because 
then you'd lose that marketing edge of that only cost nine ninety nine instead of ten dollars. You know, nine tenths of a gallon. Why about yeah. nine ninety? Yeah. Plus the yeah. Yeah. plus the tax. Well, plus the yeah. So as I look at this Article yeah. Seven, the capital budget we're talking about bringing forward. I think it's important as you present the capital planning committee recommendations, the capital budget, the draft budget should just be <coughs> highway through school and then treatment plan, right? Because really yes. Article 8 is driving down on the fire, the fire truck. truck. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So in this case here, we plug a value in as well as funding <coughs> sources, summer sums of money for the fiscal year, capital budget specified. That, 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 that is shown a document on file with. Is this language, should we have in this language funding source as well? Yes, but that's what we usually do. Yeah, it's, so we gotta, we, gotta, we gotta plug the funding sources in. So this would be from capital stabilization and free cash. Those are the only two places. And the sewer. And the sewer reserve, yep. Right, to cover the sewer part. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the total value of that capital request is three two zero nine zero six and forty eight cents. <laughs> that combines waste treatment as well as uh, the capital requests of two thirty five. So our sources are free cash, capital stabilization. And then the last part is a sewer reserve fund. And those are the only three. There's no debt associated with this at all. And that value is 320906.48. And again, Bob, we're voting a budget, just like we vote the operating budget. This is the capital budget. Funding sources, budget. Okay, with the funding source and the total values for yes. seven? Mm -hmm. um, I'll make a motion. Okay. Make a motion to modify the I would move to modify the motion of Article Seven to be a total value of three two I just wrote it down. Three two <laughs> zero nine zero six point four eight for the capital budget with the funding sources being free cash, capital stabilization, and sewer reserve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then motion to recommend, move to recommend as we just discussed. Second. All those in favor? All right. Aye. 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 Uh, we have selectment. And again, with respect to the, the fire truck and its debt, we got to figure out that funding mechanism. There's some moving pieces inside there. What we're doing at town meeting is asking the town, we're asking the legislative body of the town to approve this contingent on the debt exclusion. No. Correct. Okay. Do you have anything else to go yeah, over? Do you have a question about that? Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> the debt exclusion on a fire truck. Yeah. On the ballot, there's no number there. Just open-ended. Well, it's asked for $10 million. <laughs> Should be 538. It's not specified on the ballot. Not uh, specified on a ballot. Yeah. No. But, uh, which, which I think is very. Basically voting on. Air. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you want, if you want a, a big red thing, well, that's. I, I would. I would ask Sherry. I, a lot of times, I think those. Those are set by. 
bond uh, council and that was written bond, by bond council uh, comes up with that that information because we don't when, when you have a borrowing thing like that you don't you don't go to regular town council you have to go to town council to, to make to sure the wording's council. right and our bond council is lock lord that that's they drafted the language for the warrant article and the ballot question the bond council did yes okay i i you, but some, some, sometimes I think it's like one of those things, Bruce, is that where they, they depend on town meeting to because our town meeting is what can town authorize. Town meeting first and then the. Right, then they right, get into the final. They can authorize the expenditure. So I don't, I, I agree with you. It's, it seems strange. But yeah, I thought it was very strange. But, but you know, in, in, from a practical perspective, we're not we're not asking for anything more than the ability to borrow beyond the cap. We haven't put together the pieces that are the debt. Like we don't know the interest rate, we don't know the term, and we don't know how much of the town's reserve we're actually going to use. We do know that town meeting is going. We're asking town meeting to authorize up to five hundred and thirty-eight thousand dollars. We don't know what the pieces of the puzzle are yet. We might not even go out and we might not even go out and borrow that. I, I realize that, yeah. but what I'm saying is the person going to vote. Yeah. yeah, I agree. We're just nothing. We're no, asking nothing, to no exclude nothing, the debt, you know? but we don't know what that number is mm. yet until. I, I mean, I voted tonight. I looked at it and I said, you know, my voting to let them borrow ten million dollars. Right. You, you don't know. Sure. Good point. Hmm. Yeah, because I get, I get some of the things. You're not the, the pieces, the final pieces. You're not going to know <coughs> you, unless yeah, you take you can, that authorization. You can't do it. And that and everything else. Right, sure. but you can't go for you that can't, until you vote. You, but you can't, you don't know right now. Yep. Yeah, vote. it's it's one of those mechanical pain in the neck. Yeah. Debt that we yeah. exclude for the public safety complex and the library changes every year too right. because the interest goes down. But right. it's just this is what it What's is, the I question? Guess. <laughs> good point. It's a good, interesting point. You know, or is it is it a blank check? And I guess the it's up to the the board and the folks at town meeting to recognize that no, it's not a blank check. And when the election time comes, have something that has what the definition of that value is. What is it? What are you borrowing for? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's not Bruce's retirement home in New York, as much as we'd like it to be. It's a red truck. <coughs> yeah, so would Bruce. Anyway. But is that part of our other debt exclusion votes not have a value? In? I, feel like I, I, have, I never remember one not having a value yeah. to it. That doesn't sound. I mean, that doesn't sound familiar to me. Mm -hmm. Just not sure. What was the last? I mean, what was the last debt exclusion? Was like public safety. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, one was public safety. I'll check. Yeah, yeah I'd be Look curious to see what what it was, and then if so, what was the change and why we're going with. Nothing, right? <laughs> you know, I, yeah, I just thought it was strange. Yeah, I sure. Oh, well, it's one of those things that even, no way. you know, even if you can't do that, it's just you know, you, you just want to be as clear as possible. Yeah, absolutely, you know I mean? I, it's, it's very ambiguous. Right. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's in keeping with the times, Bruce. Well, that's so true. It's an ambiguous be. time we live in right now. That's true. Some people well, can come in. Some people can go out. <laughs> Some people can get, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's fake numbers. It's fake numbers. As far as uh, as the amount that we have on the warrant for 536-868 is the question of how we get that. Right, how do you actually fund it, right? As okay. far as if, if we are, if we're looking at a number that is barely scraping our you know recommended accountant recommended numbers sure. for keeping in free cash i don't feel comfortable taking a, a, a huge chunk of that to to pay for right our, as, as as much as i'd like to have a much lower debt mm -hmm. for well, an item of this size for this low on free cash it's a, it's a it's a good conversation to have elliot because you have to ask why did the resident now that fire truck is going to last 30 years proposed so, huh the proposed yeah. truck we hope last as long That's as the true. existing. So, company. so you, the conversation is centered about should should the the residents today um, pay for the entire truck or should it be spread out over the next pick a number ten years yeah, where there's so that the people that may not even be living in Sunderland today um, 
will be gaining value from that truck when they move into town two, in two years or three years from now or five years from now. So should it, and I, I think that's one of the fundamental questions that you usually have when you look at when you take a loan for something. Should, how, how should it be paid and why should, why should the residents of Sunderland today, 2018, pay that, that, full, that full amount? And I think the answer to that comes back to the kind of community we'll want to have. We, I mean, Absolutely. we don't have a community that has good fire coverage. We're not going to attract Absolutely. new people to move into the town <coughs> to Correct. pay property taxes to Absolutely. maintain that. So. that that's, that's, why, that's why when we talked about the uh, pay payback on the library when we built the library and the payback on the public safety complex. You know, we could we could have financed that in ten years. We could have financed it in five years. We could finance in twenty years. I mean, we picked our number saying, well, people are going to gain value from the library for the next twenty years. So why shouldn't those people be paying their res the residents should be paying for the next twenty years versus, you know, a, a shorter amount of time. Yeah, good point. So I I mean that it's just a philosophy I mean you know that that well, you can look at and and I you know and some people, and the residents of our town will be gaining value or or the use of that fire truck for the next X amount of years. So yeah, when you look at the library, look at how long the last one lasted. So it'll be you know you're getting a, you're really getting a long term value out of it. It is estimated mm -hmm. does since this is a new truck, it's estimated to be have a thirty year. Life. Oh, I think that's what the RFP requested. Yeah, that's yeah, that's far from you know driving it off a cliff. But <laughs> yeah, you know, if, if this passes, when do we actually have to come up with the money? Uh, On delivery, or is it up? There's there's a percentage of it that's up front for a deposit for construction, and I, I think in the RFP it was one third. One third. One third. And it's what about a year and a half before it's finished? It's a little over a year. Yeah, over a year. Plus, then, then you get the loan, then you don't start paying on the loan until the next year, oh, right? Year, right. So it's almost like two years away. Right. Well, I, I'm from a financing perspective. From financing, so this is an anomaly or something where we get a bunch more free cash and stuff. We can always yeah, you, you can, can pay it down if you want. Yeah, yeah sure. as you get as you get closer, okay. sure, you, you can. Okay. Whatever you can do to minimize the debt, that's for sure. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. it's an important Absolutely. strategy for the board, the selectmen, the financial team to talk about how do we minimize that debt impact based right. on the reserves you actually have. And we'll have the public safety complex and the library coming off in, in 2020. 2020. Right. And, and it's one of those things, too, though. We, 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 once we figure out what we want to put on debt, we probably want to get in as soon as possible based on the current trajectory of rates. Yeah, exactly. You Two know, years from now, you don't want to lock in yeah, bands. Yeah, right. right. But, you know, right. like a 7 to 9% rate or something like right. that, you know, versus what we've been enjoying historically low rates. So I don't think they're going to last very long the way things are going. But, well, economies are heating up all over the world. It's a good thing. That's what rates are supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. Oil's at 70 bucks. Mm -hmm. People can go out and look for it again. Right. What? It's oil is 70 bucks a barrel. People can afford to go look for it again. Yeah, all the, the geophysical stuff was basically tied up to, along the pier because it was well, no return. Well, it's interesting because then it makes it makes it economically more viable there, but then people look at the price and like, whoa, it's going up, I need to get off of that. Right. It's an interesting little, but you're right, because yeah, it's cost money to get in the ground. Right. But. Uh, Back in the late 1980s, they were, it was less than $20 a barrel, so everybody was laying up their ships. They're selling off their stock because $20, mm -hmm. they couldn't drill for less than $20 a barrel. That was the 1980s, so we're 30 years later. Cost money to drill oil. Twenty five years ago, yeah. Yeah. But but that but that's but but if you look in the oil patch, that's what's happening right now. A lot of the a lot of the, the drillers and the uh, geophysical houses are all closed up or laying up or just minimum size because they just can't. It doesn't pay to search for oil right now, so they 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 close everything up. And the drillers, the drillers aren't drilling. They're not. They're not going to sink a well. With a, there's no return for them, so we'll just better leave the oil in the ground. And you compound that. Just you compound that with the fact that 20 years ago there wasn't diagonal fracking. 
the wholesale shift yeah. to gas and renewables. To so be honest, you know, there's a reason T Boone Pickens went into wind, but that's all we're here to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> He's no idiot. <laughs> Right. That is you true. all set on that? Except with respect yeah. to the capital piece, I'd like to circle back if we could with respect to the total budget. We had a personnel committee recommendation of 2%. We never really took action on that. 3%. I'm sorry, 3%. Three. Yeah. We had Sherry develop a budget with 2%. My, my question to the board is, is that 1% or the $3,360 um, something that we have to revisit? Again, that's a personnel committee's recommendation. This is well below certain um, specific recommendations by department heads, i.e. Uh, public safety, highway, and library. And I think from the personnel committee's perspective, we were hoping that that would lessen the blow of, you know, as we, you know, if we have to make adjustments. Mm -hmm. That was that was the thing, because we didn't really want to deviate from the formula there either, but we kind of thought, okay, you know, we know we're going to have to adjust some stuff, so hopefully this will help mm -hmm. to, to minimize the impact and only put a smaller amount in there. So that was that was the thinking there after a lot of back and forth. The reason I raised the point is it was it was approached at the public, and I'm going to go on the record and thank Sherry and Department Heads Finance Committee for the effort, energy, and time spent for the pre-town meeting meeting on. Uh, Friday at the public library it was a really well laid out, really well event. I thought I was walking into a trade show of information exchange yeah. at the municipal <laughs> level. I was like, wow, that's pretty damn slick. Good for you guys. And then, you know, hopefully in years forward, uh, people associated with town meeting and uh, generally interested uh, residents will show up because that was there was a hell of a lot of information there that was right at your fingertips for three hours. I was saving that for our updates, but you're right. Uh, anyway, it's, yeah. The reason, oh, the reason great. that, that, that I toggled to that because I was approached, got brought up. Then I was approached by more than one person, but with finance committee, uh, sorry, personnel committee as well as residents about that. Why, yeah. why we acted? Why haven't we acted on that yet? Um, my my uh, my thought, Scott, is that the uh, it, it appears from what we heard back from the the personnel committee is that. That our our employees on the whole aren't overpaid, right? Um, that and for the most part, at best, there 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 there's one person that may be towards the high end of the, the high end of the, um, the the pay scale, but for the most part, most most are kind of at the midpoint or below. Mm -hmm. I I don't I don't. Um, For for the the uh, we we at, we ask we're asking we're asking our employees to hold off another year back from the uh, to try to uh, address the areas of concern. So I think this is a uh, I think this is a, uh, a a good faith article or good faith gesture by the town mm -hmm. to say, look, we we understand that there there may be a concern. Mm -hmm. We are going to put in the money. Uh, this year to have the survey done, mm -hmm. and I I think it it, it shows that our it shows our, and, and again, let, let's please make no mistake about it, when when there's a two and a half percent increase, um, that we vote for town employees, that means they get a two point five percent increase, when you have a two point five percent increase for a union, a negotiated contract. A lot of times that 2.5 is a is without considering steps or other perks right. in the contract. So so for me, I I think it's um, I think it's a good it's a it's a good faith um, voice to our to our town employees that we're trying to make we're we're trying to we're trying to do what's right. And I think it should they should, they should see it in two two respect that three percent. Versus a two percent, and also with the uh, the uh, uh, fifty five to sixty percent with the uh, with the health insurance. with the health insurance. You no, know, it's interesting. You know, we 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 can't. And Tom, I appreciate what you're saying. We can't affect uh, staff members 
who participates in the health care plan what their year in their life is going to be like. Correct. The move f from Hampshire Trust to Maya has a direct hold on what those costs could be. Plus the 5% is really, really important to me. I would say that if we move to add this $3,360 in the form of another percentage of COLA as recommended by the personnel committee, I'd ask that the overall budget, 74,14,720, blah, blah, all the way through, that somehow we find savings of 3360 in expenses somewhere else in the budget. I bet we could find somehow in there some we'll other cost that we could squeeze out of the expense side, even if it's the moderator's salary. Oh, you, you know what's you know what's, you know what's, you, know what's, you know what's, you know what's interesting, Scott, and, and and you go back to talk about the budget. I didn't mean to pull that one on you, but <laughs> I, I I don't know how many people still still read the newspaper, um, but but in particular with our surrounding towns, um, and and I I believe it's is it Orange that's having a problem with their. Their computer systems right now because they, or or they're, they're one of I think it's orange that orange. that 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 has and they had they had their um, IT providers at at the meeting, and and I, I thought it was amazing because they had the the and the guys the IT guy said well we have the and it may it may be another town but they they said they have the basic level of service, but. That basic level of service doesn't include changing passwords. Uh, um, it, your wheelhouse. It, I, I, I I'm mean, just laughing. I, I, I just <laughs> and, and they were just they were talking about and they they're having they were having this discussion and, I, and I'm sitting there going, you know, we we've been there, right? Uh -huh. and, and 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 again, you look at that increase in our, our technology. It's it's a it's a huge increase, but it's for good reason. By golly, I, I mean, you look at you look at. at at what can happen, and 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 and, and how, how do you how do you address with how do you address that? This is something that you need to do. So and it goes back to well, we have to eliminate three thousand dollars. Okay, we'll eliminate the three thousand dollars, but better not come from that technology line item. Yeah, no. Oh, we no just be, way. because <laughs> because in 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 my my view in my view. That that's you know especially after reading reading what was going on in the southern community in, in Franklin County or the bus oh yeah oh, and, 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 and and you know what that's the only one that we hear about right? and I'm right. sure it goes on a, exactly. on a lot of other ones also so Tom are you suggesting that we we don't we don't get after uh, offsetting this this I, you can we can we can offset it Scott I, just I, if, out of technology. I I I just I'm just saying I, I don't want to see it coming from the technology line I know. Because that that's a yeah, it's quote risky. unquote a big a big number, but right, right. and there's the uh, middle room in the energy line, especially with the, um, with the LED TV. street light conversion okay. and the solar project. That's true, actually, because we carry that forward without knowing a full year's benefit yeah. from that. They're estimating that I think it's six thousand now for mm -hmm. street lights, and mm -hmm. it will go down to about two thousand. Okay, so that's. That's true. Though. Yeah. Yes. Speaking of newspapers, the article they had in the paper today was very inaccurate. I haven't read the paper yet. That it's and uh, they had the lawnmower for the high for the highway department in it as an item. It's, like it's not even purchase. in the budget anymore. And it's not even there. And I mean, you know, so yeah. much for reading the newspaper. Well, you know, I, I read it every day. It right. doesn't take you long, but right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I still get. I mean, I, I subscribe to stuff online, but then I also get. The recorder and the gazette. Yeah, so I yeah. see, you know. But I mean, it wasn't accurate today. People read that, so right. maybe it should be a correction. Sure. Sure. Good oh. point. So, am I hearing? There's two things. One is we're gonna, if I could move to recommend that we adopt or we accept the personnel committee's re recommendation and do our foundation cola of three percent. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and now okay. we've got to work on the. The question sourcing. is: the question is, do we take and actually do an increase of the budget of three thousand three hundred and sixty dollars, or do we squeeze three thousand three hundred and sixty dollars out of expenses? And I'm hearing energy. There's potential. 
If we can go that route, that would be great. And we'll be transferring next year to an energy line that was overspent, but you know. <laughs> Yep. That's the risk. Yeah. 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 Reduce the budget. Yeah. Re keep the budget. Keep it. Keep it. Yeah. So yeah. we're reducing expenses. <coughs> Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Okay. There, my work's done. Well, and hopefully, you know, like we've been on the steady progress of trying to save wherever we can with energy, and we're gonna get some money in phones and, uh, after that's implemented. We'll do a handful right. of things. And yeah, I'm that's hoping another one is the phone one. Yep. will come down. Too. Yeah, and hopefully the phone. Well, it, the only thing that concerns me going forward is with these newer phone systems versus the older ones. Is mm -hmm. the older ones had a much longer shelf life in terms of the hardware. The hardware. Yes, that's the only concern because we we've seen a great drop in. Operating costs. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I'll be curious to see over, and only time will tell, like how long that equipment lasts versus, you know, but it'll be interesting to see. Because you know, all, basically all that's pushed off now to, to VoIP, so as opposed to regular phone lines. So, right. all right. So, what other things do we have left on our? Um, our motions are done. I think we're done, huh? Yep. One, of the, one of the pieces of dialogue around the Capital Planning Committee's uh, last meeting last week, and I want to thank the people who participated in that, was that we would uh, be, uh, we missed one meeting for lack of a quorum, mm -hmm. but that we would, we would immediately meet after the election to understand the appointment schedule, to understand the building assessment, but also where we fit in the timeline so that these recommendations are coming out yeah. weeks before. We would have had this a week ago, but that's another discussion. Yeah. I think, right, we, I, we should probably all get together Correct. again. Yep. yep. Okay, thank you. Anybody have any other comments on the lovely list of warrants, articles, and It'd be easy one. budget numbers, numbers right? right? It would be out by 8 o'clock, 8.30 probably, right? So you, you, you came in 23 years ago on the heels of an override, and you're going to go out 23 years later on the heels of an override. <laughs> Not much changes, does it? It's a wheel that goes around and around and around and around. So that, that, that may, may I wonder if that's our pattern and cycle, like every 20 yeah. years or so you need an override. No, every 23 years you need a moderator. <laughs> <laughs> Who's moderator before you? Was it Teddy Tudor? Ted Tudor, yeah. And then before him was uh, Bill Hubbard, wasn't it? Bill Hubbard. Well, those moderators got a long life cycle, huh? Who? The moderators have a long life cycle, huh? Tudor was long. He was what, a couple of years. He was maybe Two three or four years, yeah. That's actually an important position in terms of the the yeah. meeting too, yeah. for a whole host of reasons. You know, it's it's a, it's, it's the leader of the chamber, the legislative body right. of town meeting. Right. So, uh, yeah, keeps us, you know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it I doesn't make you the majority leader. Yeah. <laughs> Based on your comments, a move that we increase the moderator's salary to ten thousand a year. <laughs> yeah. Retroactive. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Retroactive. Good play. Contingent on them. Some towns used to pay health insurance for paid elected officials. Yeah, that's and the moderator was one of them. Yeah, and and that's why a lot of lawyers were moderators. Yeah, because of health insurance. There you go. Makes perfect sense. <laughs> a lot of a lot of farmers too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. independent people. Yeah, yeah. electricians. <laughs> Those are lots of health care. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> one issue with town meeting. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I need to talk with Wendy, but. Podium for the front, mm -hmm. you know, on the floor. FCAT, you got that? Podium? Podium for the front for folks coming up to ask questions. You can do it. I don't know that we have a podium, but I can ask Chris. I think you can do it. I think we borrow it from the police department. Do we? Oh, from the back room. safety. I'll check okay. with Cindy. Does it come with flags and eagles? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was at a uh, I was at a conference. I sent a information to Sherry, but they uh, 
They have a microphone that you toss around. Yeah, that oh, was yeah. very neat. Yeah, we, we do that at our um, corporate What do you mean? Toss around? Full time. Right? It's, 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 it's a soft, it's, it's, it's about yay big. The microphone's included inside, <laughs> and you can toss it across the room. Toss it. And, 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 wow. and what it does, it, what it does is it, it brings people, it actually brings okay. the conversation because people aren't afraid because they don't have to get up. They yeah. can sit at their seat right. and, and it, encur it actually encourages people, it's but I think it, That's a good it, it actually encourages people to, uh, yeah, to participate more. And what, what happens if the guy misses it? It's the head knocks him out. It's all going to affect our liability. <laughs> So, so it'd be like a soft, soft boiled egg hitting a soft boiled egg, but, but. <laughs> it's like a Nerf ball. They, uh, no, That's but it worked, it, it worked, it worked. Uh, it was at, I, I watched a conference, it was for three days, and, and whenever we got in big groups, that's what they did. Just um, tossed it. And, and, and if they can leave, you'll put your eye out with that. I sent that to you, right? <laughs> sure, I sent that to you. Yeah, right? that's fun. <laughs> yeah. That and they, they actually, and, and it really worked. But it, but actually, and, and people in the conference afterward, they asked about it. It, it actually encouraged people to to speak. Yeah, and to participate. Throw me the ball. Right. right, and especially if you don't have to stand up. I mean, I completely get that a lot of people just aren't comfortable in a in an yeah. open forum like that. So I understand that. Well, and, and it, hap it helped that we were right across from Camden Yards. So right. there you go. You know, nice. yeah. But but it did it did work and and everybody could speak and there was no lost time waiting to get up or, you know, waiting to acknowledge some you know. Well, it, interesting. And hmm. that kind of leads into our, if we're all done here, like on our like, uh, we'll skip the minutes for a second. We'll go like to, to our board updates. Mm -hmm. to extend on that the thanks for everybody who participated, in putting on and everybody who came to the event over at the library, and hopefully. Um, the more we get out of this, it's kind of like doing our homework and getting extra information. So that way, when we get into the town meeting, we're spending less time asking for information there and debating the merits of it rather than going back and forth over the fundamental stuff. Out of curiosity, do we have the numbers for all, uh, how many people attendance? Attend? I don't know. Do we have anybody no. at the door with a clicker? That's a good idea for next, next time. time. Yeah. So I can get an estimate based on our normal Friday attendance numbers yeah. versus last Friday. So I can get that. Oh, do you guys track the, the attendance? We, we check everyone who comes in and out of the doors. So oh, I awesome. can give you that kind of count. Oh, oh, okay. Do you manually do it or like? No, we have a little, a little you'll see them. There's a little laser. Little thing. eyes. Yeah. Okay. That's <laughs> that kind of stuff. Well, it doesn't say who comes in and out. It just says the number. Right. And if you stand in the middle there, you throw my numbers off. So. That's right. <laughs> tick, 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 It's like cheating your Fitbit. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be on your Facebook page and sent to Cambridge Analytica before. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. but, that, but that's good because I think, and if anybody's got feedback too, let us know about what you thought about it um, because it's, it's, I think it's a good learning experience for us because it's also a good way to figure out what kind of information people are looking for and you know what format they'd like to get information in so great points yeah honestly i love having these kinds of things at the library i think it's a perfect spot for it but it might have been too small for, yeah. for the event it might be better served at the school if they can swing it this time of year yeah, just, what... just a thought <laughs> i mean that's or, a good or thing a, or a day you're closed but take over the whole space that's yeah. true yeah that's true do it, on, do it on thursday yeah absolutely or maybe even a weekend next time if we can. Yeah, do it during the week. Yeah. I think you all get a better turn up. Great points. Mm. And we have to try to avoid school vacation, I think, next time. Yeah. Yes. It's just so hard to right, some people find the perfect time. So much going on. Yeah, that's yep. a thing. All right. Um, do we, let's go back to our minutes then. If we, oh, well, actually, do we have any other, any other board updates before we? I have one of the board updates. Can we tell? Uh, <clears throat> board updates, I, I've heard, I don't know if it's official or unofficial, but it looks like um, the building of the South County EMS building may be nearing completion. Okay. I, I'm getting, I, I'm starting to hear turnover may be like May 14th to the town of Deerfield, yeah. maybe. Yeah. So, so I, I think we're, get, we're getting one, we're a couple steps closer to that. Uh, being done, um, I I think the Deerfield, I think the Deerfield board can actually talk to people now because it's all mm -hmm. basically complete. It's just cleaning stuff up now. So, um, 
So that's good. I, I, it's good for it's good for our region that way. I, you know, right now we're spending extra money. With our ambulances are being shifted around, and and we're going to be able to get the, all the ambulances in one location, one secure location. Yeah. Um, get everybody we'll free, into one roof. It will free will free up a little yeah. room in our in our uh, our fire department. I would I would like to uh, also tell Sherry about the uh, the Friday night thing. Is that I I think um, it's it was a little different, um, and and hopefully it'll grow with 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 time. People know they mm -hmm. they can come. Right. I actually I will. I'll disagree with David a little bit. I, I hope it doesn't cut off conversation. I hope I hope the by gathering the information that people will be able to have a, a deeper discussion, a more accurate discussion exactly. about the stuff and instead of well I heard on the street like Bruce was talking about earlier about hearing about you know reading in the newspaper and the newspaper's wrong. Um, a lot of a lot of time that stu that does because it's where does people get their information, um, and I think having that thing allows people to go get that information, and they can have an intelligent discussion about something instead of shooting from the hip. And I think that over time will that's my point. Yeah, will come will will pay dividends. Yep. And you'll have you'll have a better discussion. All right, and we're all on the same page. That's. Well, we're at the same starting point. Yes, we don't end up exactly. <laughs> Who knows where we go, but we're at the same yeah. starting. We're, we're all at the starting line together. Exactly. I also yeah. would move that the blueberry cake remain. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the blueberry cake <clears throat> in the mix. I like it. And the cookies. You know, maybe we can also like add a little like baking contest yeah, in there okay. or something to get some more participants and people involved. Um, do you have anything you want to update on at all, Sherry? No, just I know you haven't been doing too you. much. It's quiet, <laughs> you know. <laughs> for everyone that participated. Yeah. Uh, thank you for getting all that rolling, too. So much. appreciate it. Uh, okay. Now let's dispense of our minutes from 417. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, do you have any, any other public comments tonight at all? I was I was waiting. <laughs> it's actually more directed to Sherry, but I just thought I'd mention it here. I got an email from her this afternoon about the memorandum of agreement that uh, dealing with the um, health insurance change and the union at, unions at the school and the school committee sign off, I guess, in addition to the selectmen. Uh, the union and I didn't know what your timeline on that was because yes, we may that is a couple of us, but I assume we need a school committee vote to do something like that. I don't know the the We're uh, hoping by May first. <laughs> it, 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 it doesn't require a school committee vote. It requires the board of selectmen and the representative <coughs> the union. union contracts are with the school committee. Oh right, they execute so those. You, you're right. Yeah, you yeah, both yeah, need yeah, to ratify. Yeah. So then the question is a week. I mean, what really, what are the constraints here so that it gets taken care of properly? And is May 1st a serious? May 1st, I believe, is the serious. What happens if May 1st is missed? I will ask uh, town council. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, I have a couple, one is, you know, it certainly seems that's not something that we can do without a school committee vote. Right. Unless you have some reason to tell me otherwise. And, uh, and I guess the other question would be whether you know, does that mean that, that, that the school lawyer also needs to issue an opinion on this before the school committee can vote on it? Either. I'm not, again, I'm new on this, so I'm not yeah. sure of the, the way these things work, and I just thought I'd, you know, I'd take the time. Do mm. you refer to the union lawyer, or? No, I'm talking about the a lawyer that represents, you know, represents the school administration or the school committee. You know, on matters that, uh, yep. Whether they need to mm. eyeball this or not, you know, I, mean, I hate it. You know, just sort of the reality of the world is sometimes that has to happen. I'll check in tomorrow. Okay, that's a great point, Peter. I mean, we need forty-eight hours to schedule a meeting, and we, have, you know, I'm sure we could get a quorum and and do it if it has to be done by then. But you know, if that is the case, then we need to get moving on. Right, right, because right, then you got to leave your advance notice of the meeting and everything too. You got to have the forty-eight hours. Yep. But, 
May 1st is next Tuesday. I understand. So right. it's got to be, we got to figure out within the next day or two whether we need to do it and then. Are they going along with the program? That's the way I read it, but I didn't. Is the union going along with the program? Yeah, you know, they've, they've been, been notified. Meeting. Yes, and we, and we have to meet with them. So, right. Well, hold on, but the memorandum, what's your understanding of what the memorandum said? Because mine, it sounded to me like you had your agreement, but maybe that's not what Not yet. Is. No. No, we don't have We're, any so agreement. What's yet. the point of the memorandum then? Discussion um, with the union. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. That's that's our that's our starting that's our conversation. That's our conversation straw man with the union. So we need to sign off. Once on they agree, then the school says, committee would agree. We're just going forward with discussion. Um, um <laughs> say we talk in the morning with respect to that. An MOA with um, the unions. The unions is generated by. Council uh, voted by the municipal body and then oh. presented as the starting point for the discussion. It has to be ratified by both the selectmen and right. the school committee once the unions agree. Right. And then what's the process by which the discussions are held? Uh, probably the union rep and Sherry first. So it would be the police rep, which would be... I'm meeting Peter. with... Ben Peters ben on Peters. Wednesday, and yeah. David is meeting with the school union rep. Hopefully on Wednesday, we're just waiting for confirmation. Yep. Well, it sure sounds like we need to schedule. Going as fast as we can. Yeah. <laughs> it sure sounds like we're going to need to schedule a meeting, because our next meeting currently is not, I believe, until May 20th. Oh. Yeah, so we'll have to get a meeting scheduled, and we can close that loop tomorrow with respect to that timing to with town council. In the morning. Yeah. Could you maybe then just send something to the uh, superintendent. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> a, you know, come to you and just say, we need a meeting to in order to proceed with this. And um, can you schedule one with this one issue on the agenda and um, then it needs to be done right away because you have 48 hours. And I'll I'll check in with you in the morning before I do any contacting of anybody just so that we're all in the same board. It's a great yeah. point to bring up. I hate to have an opportunity missed, a window missed because of right. a I lack just, of understanding. I just got it and so thought, you know, this Me could too. be more complicated than what this looks like. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, given the opportunity, we can always make it more complicated. <laughs> we will this sometimes. <laughs> it's but our job to figure out how to That's get exactly through all the hurdles. Right. It's a great point, Peter. Great I mean, point. You know, on the surface, it seems like, oh, it should be. Really yeah. easy. Well, sure, just to really follow can't. up on this with the school administration, but then obviously they'll be, you know, letting us on the sure. committee know that we're sure know, in the loop, right? and, and I'm sure, you know, maybe there's no date that all five would get to, but I don't think we need to really get more than three out of five there because it's right. not controversial. It just needs a pretty much a proposal. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Great point. Binder time. <laughs> so many binders. binders full of numbers. Binders full of numbers. All right. So do we have the uh, well, actually before uh, our annual town meeting will be Friday, April 27, 2018 at 7 p.m. at the Sunderland Elementary School. You don't want to miss that action-packed evening. It's always good fun. And then our next meeting will be Monday, April 30th, 2018 at 6.30 p.m. We're not going to have a meeting before the uh, the town no, meeting, just in case did, something comes up. I did post. Yeah, we should be posted for six thirty or half an hour before. Right. Yeah. Usually, yeah. I did do that today. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You make sure to be posted as well. Three points. So then, six thirty. Okay. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.